This video is about replacing a hard drive in a desktop computer. In this case, it's a Dell tower. It's an Optiplex 380. And the hard drive I picked up for it is actually a two and a half inch. I, uh, when I got a hold of this computer, it didn't have a, it was used and it didn't come with hard drive. So I looked it up and uh, got on the internet and wanted to get a three and a half inch SATA, S-A-T-A type hard drive for it. And when I started looking at the options on the three and a half inch SATAs, they had them with as high as 10,000 RPMs. Actually, I think you can get them at 15,000 too, but I was looking at 10,000 and I thought, well, why not? You know, go up from 7,200 and, you know, make it faster. So, I, um, what I quickly find out was that the 10,000 RPM ones are actually two and a half inch size hard drives. And the one I looked at, it came with an adapter that just kind of screwed onto the sides of it to make it three and a half inches so that you could put it in a regular tower that had originally had three and a half inch hard drives. Opening this is actually pretty easy to get access. You pull out this lever, as you can see, it releases the side panel. And if you notice, the panel is on the side opposite of your power connectors and all your USB ports and stuff on the back of the computer. Okay, your hard drive bay is right here. And of course it was made for a three and a half inch hard drive. And now before you handle the hard drive or anything else that you're doing in there, make sure you, you take care of uh, any static. So you can wear a anti-static wristband. In this case I'm touching this here to make sure there's no spark. This is a two and a half inch hard drive which of course is way too small. And it came with these little side panel adapters here that would go in on the side would screw into it and convert it to three and a half inch. But even with those, they were still too small. So I thought, well, okay, what's going on? So what I found out was that a lot of these computers come with a modular type adapter to hold the hard drive. So the regular three and a half inch hard drive will snap right in here. You don't need any tools. There's little pegs in here for where you would normally have the screws. This baby will just slide right in real easy to change your hard drive in and out, put your SATA cables on, your power cable, and your data cable. But even with this adapters attached to it, it still wouldn't fit. So I did a little searching and found another adapter. This one's called Sargent. I'll get the box and show you what it is. Okay, I said it was a sergeant. It's actually a sabrent, I guess is how you say it. And it's supposed to hold a two and a half inch hard drive. And it says it'll hold two of them. And it refers to these SSDs, which are uh, solid state drives, which are a little bit thinner. And uh, like I say, it says it'll hold two of them. And one ad I saw claimed it would hold two of any two and a half inch hard drives. Well in my case these aren't a real thin profile hard drive but it will hold one of them. Okay even though it was advertised to be able to hold two of any two and a half inch hard drive mine are a little too thick. If you get the real thin ones like that are made for a laptop it might actually hold two of them. But this one here it holds one comfortably so that means I can only put one in the plastic adapter there.
So we'll put this one in the adapter. And I'm going to have my sockets there for plugging in the data cable and the power cable going towards this end. And it snaps in there really nice and easy. Now one of the first things you might notice about this plastic adapter, I think this one's a JY221 model number, is it appears, you know, when you look at it here, that this would be the top. But actually, this side is the top. And as you can see, when I get the hard drive in so that it aligns up with the cables, the, card drive, the hard drive appears to be upside down because this is the bottom of the computer. And you also, when you put in this modular adapter, you need to make sure this rail, that's why it has to be that way, it slides in, this rail fits in. If you try to, it goes right in. If you try to do it this other way, it won't go in. You, if you tried to force it, you'd break your plastic holder. So it'll go right in. Now the problem's going to be that this small hard drive sets down in the plastic modular adapter pretty deep. If you had the regular standard three and a half inch hard drive, it'd come all the way up to the top of this. But instead, it's like a full inch down in there. You can see it's a, an inch below the top of it. And where that creates an issue is when you try to plug in your wires. You notice for one thing, this piece of plastic here, the housing, is blocking access to one of the, the data side plus it goes down an inch. Now that part I can work around that actually. So this part up here above the hard drive is the part that's going to get removed. I'm going to lose about an inch of it. I'm going to hack off that part and that part. So this is the type of saw I'm going to try to remove it with. I've drawn a couple of lines on here to show where the top of the hard drive comes to. I'm going to saw that little tab off and over here and then we're going to lose this area here. And of course I'm not going to do it over the computer. Okay, now of course a hacksaw is not made for plastic. But I'm not doing this for a living so I'm doing what I got at home. and. I just happen to have a hacksaw available. So I'm just going to very gently get her going there, get my thumb out of the way. And we'll snip that off of there. Okay, I wanted to show you how I modified this J. Y221 or whatever the name is. If, as you can see this part here is shorter. So I trimmed it off with a little hacksaw in my case above this tab. So that when the hard drive is in there because it sets in about here we'll say. If you didn't cut it off and you had it on this one you'd be trying to connect your wires you'd have your SATA cables and this would be in the way and it just they wouldn't reach good you could probably reach if you had a straight in plug for your data cable instead of the uh, 90 degree ones I might have one here the 90 degree connector comes in so if it came in here it wouldn't want to reach but since I trimmed this off it would reach and uh, you can buy these that are straight instead of having the 90 degree band 
so that you'd be going straight in like that, and then you could do it no problem. But you still might have an issue with the power connectors, especially if you were trying to do two bays, because it just they'd get in the way. They're just not long enough, and you have a 90 degree bend in it. So it was far easier for me just to trim this off. I just very gently used a cheap hacksaw and shortened that. And that helped a lot. And I was able to get it in the computer no problem and uh, connect the wires. And I put the operating system on and the thing runs. So for me that worked. You know, you might have to look at your own system your own way because who knows what you'll run into. Okay, so now we can put this in. See here, I'm going to ground myself out here on this to keep from having a static spark. The idea of that is, you know, like, think about how little kids go out and rub their feet on the carpet, especially if they're in their socks, and then go up, walk up someone, touch them, and spark them. Same idea can happen with your computer parts and you don't even have to feel a spark. There's actually quite a few volts in that. You can touch it and be convinced that you didn't make a spark and the computer parts can still be affected by it because it puts enough volts in there that even though you don't feel it, it can fry it. So I'm going to do that. I've got my hard drive here and the adapter. And I'm putting it in my other adapter. Line up the little pegs there with the screw holes. And it should snap right in. And it's in there. And now my wires will be able to come down and plug in without running into anything. Now, of course you may have already noticed if I put it in this top half of the bay that oh baby, the wires can still run into an issue. Well, maybe I don't have it in there quite right. Ah, it's not in this one. Okay, so you got to make sure you got all four pegs in, or it won't go in. There, see, it falls in real nice and easy if you got them in there good. Now, the issue you got here is that it's uh, down in here low. Now, it's still going to the data cable reach. The power cable's got a little issue. It's not quite long enough. And I'll see if I can show you what's going on there. Okay, so we'll give you a little different view here. Here's your power supply. The wire's coming out. And here's the drive bay for the hard drives are at. And this is the power cable wires. And the thing is that they've got a zip tie on here just to kind of bundle them together tight and it's just not quite long enough to reach you down in there very good. It could almost make it, but it needs to be just a hair more. And if I had it in this other drive, in the bottom slot, this end one would make it quite a bit easier. But I'm wanting to have two hard drives in here if possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to snip a zip tie off of here, a little electrical tie. Hopefully we'll stay in focus. Might not be very good focus, but on this cord, there's just a little nylon electrical tie on there. And I want to snip it off of there with a pair of cutters. And of course, not cut into the wires. You don't want to short anything out. Okay, I'll see if I can get this little tie to come off of here without tearing anything up. It's a little 
little bit of a tight squeeze in there. Okay. So hopefully that'll give me enough extra length. Yeah, I think it will. That gave me some extra. And now my power cable just might make it. Okay, I'm going to try to show you how there's only, these connectors will only plug in one way. Can you see it's, there's a little notch on there. It keeps you from rotating them 180. If the hard drive had been mounted the other way around, like if I would flopped it 180, it would fit in the adapter just fine. But the plug wouldn't line up right, and your wires would be backwards which wouldn't be good. So this will only go in one way. And now we'll see if we can get this power connector on here. And it goes on okay. And then my data cable and it goes on. Now the wire, you know, I had to kind of bend it a little bit, which I didn't like, but I didn't have to kink it at least. So now this baby is hooked up to there. Let's hope everything else is agreeable with it so that it likes a 10,000 RPM hard drive. Now if everything's agreeable, I'm gonna, I've got another one of these plastic adapters and another hard drive so then I should be able to, I can get another one of those Sabrent adapters and plug in another hard drive in this slot and then I've got another data cable I can use now this particular model of computer came with two DVD drive bays now you can have two DVDs and one hard drive or you can have two hard drives and then only use one DVD drive so what my plan will be is to unplug the one here that's not got a burner in it and keep the one that has a DVD burner in it now I'm trying to show you where the uh, data cable the SATA data cable plugs into the motherboard if you notice it says you can see above the orange one see the a zero and then SATA you have a SATA zero is the blue one right here the orange one is SATA one it's kinda of hard to see the one it's outside the A and then there's a third one right over here right there which is the wires are in the way where it's hard for me to show you on there but that's SATA 2 so I can have three different SATA cables hooked up to the motherboard and that's on this particular model yours could be completely different And then, of course, the power cable comes from your power supply. And you got all kinds of nice wires for that. And right now, these here are running into the back of my DVDs. You got a DVD burner and a DVD, just a ROM read only one. And then the one for my hard drive ran over here to the hard drive bay.